Hey guys, if you're here, like for me, I just got out of the shower, but a uh, long awaited video of my Chrome review. Sorry, <laughs> I had to pull off my sock. In. Uh, Chrome review. So, yeah, Google Chrome, browser released by Google, if you didn't know. Uh, you can check out google.com slash chrome. There's been a couple videos on it, the GUI, stuff like that. I'm just giving my general thoughts and opinions. One, because, uh, you know, it's always great to inform you guys. Two, a lot of people have been asking me on Twitter, or a couple people have been asking me, and I've been getting emails on my opinions on Chrome. So, uh, gotta just address it all here. So, yeah, okay. Chrome review. First off, let's go through the GUI. I can't actually show you Chrome. You can check it out. Uh, maybe I'll do a screencast later with it. Um, basically, your whole top bar, your whole, you know, Firefox, your whole top address bar, everything, it's all, all called the Omni bar because everything's in one. Uh, your whole top bar is where your tabs go, so it's a little different looking than you're used to in Firefox, etc. Your tabs are on top, and they're integrated kind of with your address bar. Hey, you have your backspace, front, back, forward, refresh, then you have your address bar, which is pretty long. And the whole thing itself is pretty slim. Yeah. And if you add the bookmarks to the bookmarks, you can just slide up and down. So you I mean you don't really even need to be out all the time. Um, then you have two things because you don't have the file, you know, edit tools, whatever. You know, all that is in these two little um, buttons. One would be your page for your settings, and I guess one would be the little ratchet for your settings, and I guess the other one is for your commands. New tab, new window, new incognito, setting some other stuff. So um, that's add a so that's control, I guess they, they call it the control center, the other one's customize Google Chrome. And then you have your basic minimize, maximize, and close, and a little Google up there. And it doesn't have, like, luckily, you know, Google wasn't uh, pushing out their uh, search engine. I guess you could say it's integrated with their address bar, but they didn't pull, like, a Google toolbar or anything like that. Because uh, it's adopted by, uh, has some ideas from Firefox, has that type of uh, awesome bar effect where it kind of, you know, uh, kind of estimates your search from your, based on your bookmarks, history, etc. Though, if you do hit tab on your thing, they'll Google search, they'll put this little thing that says search google.com, then uh, two semicolons, and you put whatever you want to search right there. So, that's really cool. Um, I've been messing around with it for a while. It's not that bad for a beta. I would say it's really good. Uh, though, there is some things I want to address. So, okay. Maximize it all the way here. Okay, so you first off, let's go around my notes over here. That's like I explained the GUI. So you have a lot of screen real estate, even if you're on a reasonably smaller monitor. This is about 15, 16 inches. You get a lot of screen real estate. Uh, the Omni bar went over that. Now the tabs. Like I said, the tabs are uh, above the address bar, and they use dynamic tabs. Where if I was to open two tabs, I can drag one out, and it would go into its own separate window, and very, very quick. Or I can take the tab and drag it back into another window, and Bam, you know, it's, it's there. Um, to the tab page, the home page by default, is your most visited site, and I found that kind of really useful. I mean, Opera has type of integrated this, but more of you have to pick your pages, uh, as well as um, Firefox, you can get add-ons for speed dial. And also has a little search thing right here. Uh, it's really, really great, though. I really, really love it. Uh, I may change it in the future, but as for now, I'm going to leave it as, as is now. Another cool thing, each tab is its own process, just like your own applications would be your own process. Firefox is its own process. Um, uh, Windows Explorer is its own process. Skype is its own process. They each have their own process and then has its own task manager. Works a little bit like Windows does, or I guess any operating system, really. For every tab you open, it's kind of having its own environment to work, so that's what makes it faster. It also has one of the only browsers that's really multi-threading, so that's what makes it, you know, fast search because it's all working on its own. It's not all working together. Not only does it make it faster, but it makes it easier if you have a problem with one tab and you don't have to close the whole browser. You can close that one specific tab and work on your other tabs because they're all they're separate process. Uh, and you would think that tab opening and, you know, going through was, takes long because of that. But since it doesn't have to load that much on the new tab, it's pretty fast. Um, for beta, actually, it's really fast. It's much faster. I've, I've tried IE beta, too, as well, so much faster than that. So the browser itself, if you go to the About Google Chrome, is built off of um, Mozilla 5.0, Windows U, Windows NT 5.1, Apple WebKit, so uh, KHTML, like Gecko, and Chrome and Safari as well. So built off Firefox 5.0 and it's adopted uh, or Mozilla, does it say not 5.0, sorry, it's a slash 
uh, it's only 3.0, I guess they're talking about a certain, I don't know. But it has features like from Mozilla, like like I said, the awesome bar type thing. The type of uh, buttons integration from, if you, you notice uh, if you, you're a heavy Firefox user, you'll see the different uh, the similarities between that and Chrome. Um, again, it's built off WebKit, which is only going to get faster. But Google Chrome itself will, of course, get faster in loading, etc. But it's also, at the same time, going to get slower is another way. What I mean by this is when extensions come, when more plugins come, like stuff like for playing iTunes, for playing Windows Media right now, they have like Flash and stuff like that. But when more third-party plugins come available, more third-party extensions, which they're probably going to, you know, enable in some way or another, it's going to get slower, just like Firefox. I mean, Firefox is really fast, uh, 3.1, I should say. If you wanted to strip it all down, you know, without installing themes and add-ons, it would probably be, in, of course, in some aspects, faster than Chrome, because, you know, Chrome is just like that. It has no add-ons. That's how Safari is fast as well. It doesn't really have any add-ons. Um, now, in terms of uh, some feature, other features, it has incognito mode, which is private browsing, which, yeah. Private browsing doesn't store cache, cookies, anything. About colon configs, it has some type of uh, things like that. You can go to about colon crash, which is a cool little... Uh, I guess you could say Easter egg that they put in. Uh, that's what crash looks like in Chrome when you crash it, of course. Um, um, about colon memory shows your current status of your tabs and what, how much memory it's using. It's like basically what the task manager would do. But the cool thing is it compares it to other browsers you have open, Firefox, IE, Opera, etc. Um, so those are the main features. Uh, again, it's really, really fast loading JavaScript, and I'm going to go over a couple of those things real quick right now. Now, before I get to that, I want to mention bugs. Some bugs I've noticed is of using it. Flash is sluggish. It really has to, they have to, you know, integrate Flash more uh, smoothly. There's a lot of, you know, uh, jitters, bugs with Flash, and it crashes a lot because of Flash. So if they work on that, uh, Chrome is going to be a good browser in release time. Uh, WebKit, like I said, it's only going to get faster, but when extensions and plugins come, you know, that's when it gets a little difficult. Uh, my general thoughts, it's a great, great browser. Uh, I love it so far. Uh, it's not going to be my main browser as of yet. I mean, for you know, opening Gmail stuff like that, it's right on. It doesn't have any specific features for Gmail or Google Calendar, other though, other than it loads it pretty damn fast. But um, just some rundown on JavaScript. It's really built for JavaScript. Um, it runs. Uh, let's see here. It's running what they call V8, which is the engine it uses by Google for Chrome. Uh, JavaScript Core is for Safari and WebKit. Squirrelfish is for Safari 4.0. Spider Monkey is for Firefox as of right now, but they're going to move to something called Trace Monkey, which isn't officially out yet, but when it is, uh, this is supposed to boost Firefox's uh, speed in JavaScript as well, so we're going to have to measure that out later on. As of now, um, Sun Spider and that engine, uh, Chrome is doing kind of the best. It's competing with Safari and Firefox 3.1 without tracing, so this is when Firefox 3.0 gets tracing, which is the new engine it's going to be running on, it's going to be, I would say, three times faster. Um, SunSpider XP on Vista, uh, running on the engine. Uh, TraceMonkey, with, with the common script that I guess this guy has gotten a hold of. Uh, on XP, looks like uh, TraceMonkey is doing better than V8, uh, which is the engine Chrome's running on, and as well as on Vista, V8 is running. I'll leave a link to this blog post in the video description. Here in... Google Chrome, what they released, their benchmark, Google's own benchmark. Uh, this is for Windows XP. It looks like it says, uh, I'm not sure what thing they're using here. I guess it's just basic JavaScript performance. Uh, it says that here that Chrome is the fastest in JavaScript, and it is fast at loading JavaScript. It um, has a couple other tests, but again, Firefox is competing it up with there. Uh, Safari's not far behind as well. IE is kind of hanging in, but I mean, when Firefox 3 gets the trace monkey, that's something we're really going to have to look at. So, um, like I said, my overall opinion, it's a great browser, a lot of features, uh, loads of JavaScript like crazy. And I forgot to mention one thing, if you go to your, uh, what is it, your little paper thing and go to create application shortcuts, uh, it's a really cool thing where it basically will strip down the browser just for, it'll just show up a bar, but a random blank bar, you know, your top bar. And it looks like a web application. It just has everything, all the distractions are gone, and it looks more like a web application. So it's really cool for Gmail and G Google Calendar. You can integrate it on the desktop, start menu, whatever you want to do with it. It's really cool. So, yeah, uh, a lot of cool features. Uh, it depends on if it's going to get faster or slower. You know, it's going to vary. Uh, has a couple of bugs again for a beta, though. It's doing really, really great. 
and it's going to be competing up there with Firefox. I mean, it's not their main goal, I'm guessing, because they made it open source. You not really want to compete with those. as more as change the browser industry, and that's something Google's, you know, good at doing. And not browser industry, but, you know, the industry itself. So, looking forward to seeing updates. I'll be having another review once the official version of Chrome comes out. Thanks for listening, guys, and don't forget to check out the website at www.adrianstech.com.